All right, hello and welcome to our an, another exciting discussion surrounding student success, uh, which starts with a fundamental habit of showing up. I hope you're all having a great week and staying cool. I know we've got some heat moving through the state of Texas. Um, so today I am very, very excited and um, happy to share out and do some quick introductions as we get started um, on our discussion today about improving student success. So. Um, today, I brought my two, two of my district partners. Um, I'm going to have them do some quick introductions in just a second um, from Sheldon ISD and East Central ISD. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start with you, Juan. Can you quickly, not quickly, take your time, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Sheldon ISD. Yes, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're at. Uh, it's a pleasure being here today. My name is uh, Juan Duenas, I'm the Assistant Superintendent of School Support at Sheldon ISD, and uh, we are located in the northeast portion of Houston. Uh, we do have about 10,000 students. We are about 83% economically disadvantaged. We have about 68% of our students are Hispanic, uh, close to 30% African American, 4% Caucasian, and obviously 2% multi uh, multi. Uh, cultural. So we are a very diverse district. Uh, we're very proud of our district. And just like everybody else, you know, we really suffer as far as attendance goes uh, during the COVID uh, year, spe specifically last year. And so this, like, this year that just uh, concluded, one of our number one priorities was to try to get the students back. So I'm very excited to be part of this uh, webinar and be able to share some of our success stories, some of our strategies, and obviously learn from, from you too. So, so thank you. Great. And John, can you tell us a little about a little bit about East Central? Absolutely. Uh, good afternoon. It's definitely an honor to be able to, to present uh, and definitely learn from each other. Um, looking forward to hearing Juan's ideas, strategies. And, and so that's what we're here for is to to help one another because we definitely don't have the solution to attendance. Right. So attendance is a challenge. It's hard regardless of, of uh, where part of the state or the country you're at. And so just know that we're all evolving and changing with, with the times. Um, but so here, I'm the director of student services, so I oversee attendance and uh, also the hearing officer for the district. Uh, but uh, ultimately, I'm here to serve students, servant leader. Uh, but set, we're in San Antonio, we're in the southeast part of San Antonio, Texas. And, and you know, we roughly have about 10,500 students. We're growing at a, at a at a fast rate, uh, bond pass. We're going to add a middle school and a, a several elementary schools. Uh, but we are located in the southeast part of San Antonio. Uh, but we we do partner with a lot of our neighboring districts on, again, the challenge with the tenants is how do we get them to come on a daily basis? Because it's not so much why aren't they coming, but, but what's the barrier preventing them from coming to school? So something's going on. Uh, we do know that the pandemic was a major uh, adverse situation. But now that we've kind of moved forward is like, now let's figure out why, why, you know, what's the barrier preventing you now? Like, what, what, what can we do to support you to help you to eliminate that barrier? But again, I'm looking forward to this opportunity to present and also learn uh, from you all. So thank you for being here. It is all about learning and sharing out. Um, so a little bit about uh, me and the company. I'm Brenda Tapp. I'm a, a client uh, customer success manager. I've worked with um, Sheldon ISD, East Central ISD, been with the company about a dozen years. A um, little bit about our, us, SINA. So we partner with districts throughout the United States to increase learning time and with the ultimate goal of increasing graduation rates, right? And we do that by focusing on the fundamental and critical skill of showing up. Uh, our focus isn't just on absenteeism, but taking a proactive approach to prevent truancy and chronic absenteeism by communicating with all students. And what how we do that is we provide a software platform service training um, and we also generate and send communications on behalf of our schools across the United States. Uh, we're currently about two and a half million students strong um, and we work with small, large, urban, rural districts, every shape and size you can imagine um, and they're all they're all seeing success. So we also, part of our service is providing timely, actionable data. And we're going to share some of that out today. Actually, East Central and Sheldon's going to share that out today um, and, and really show how we want to take actionable data 
and what that can help us do to help increase student attendance and achievement. Um, and so not only are we going to focus on the tier one, those are required um, notifications that we talk that we talk about with truancy, for example, but also a proactive and, and what else is involved, what kind of system you have to have in place. Uh, so we partner, we've been partnering with Sheldon ISD since 2019. Uh, they came in right before the pandemic hit. Um, and then we've been partnering with uh, East Central um, ISD since 2009. So we have both a newer client and a district partner who's been with us um, through the thick and the thin of it as we've gone through. All right, so today what we're going to focus on is we know, first of all, that conditions have changed. Uh, we know that chronic absenteeism remains way too high across the nation. So if you feel like you're struggling with attendance and chronic absenteeism and overall absences, you're not alone. And that's why we're here today. Um, we know that over the past several years, good habits have been forgotten and bad habits in regards to attendance have been gained and learned. We know that what we're facing ahead of us is a fiscal fiscal cliff. We know that ADA isn't where we want it to be, so we're going to talk about that today as well. Um, and that we know that focusing on attendance is going to be essential for recovering from the pandemic. Um, and we know, you know, chronic absenteeism has a huge impact on our students' learning, right? In fact, 67% of course failures is due to lack of attendance. So how bad is it? <laughs> Let's take a look. So we currently work, like I said, with, with millions of students. We've been tracking um, uh, over half a million students over the past um, th four years during the pandemic to see what the attendance trends are looking at. Again, we're not going to just focus on just the absence kids. We want to look overall, all of our students, how are all of our students doing through this? Um, so what this, what we do is we break the students' attendance down in different categories. Of course, we're all familiar with chronic absenteeism being 10% or more. Um, on this chart, we're showing since 2019-20 at the top to 22-23 down to the bottom, just end of the year. Um, back in 2019-20, our chronic rate, the students that missed more than 10%, was hovering around 13.6%. End of year this year, nationwide, those half over half a million students, are the average is 27.3. Also something we would look at is students who in the past have had excellent attendance, missing less than 1% of the year, or even less than 5%, which is satisfactory. Back in 2019-20 was a significant part of our enrollment versus the trend line now when you look at 2022-23. So what does that tell us? We've got work ahead of us and you're not alone, right? So we know, and I know I'm going to be preaching to the choir for the next 10 seconds. We know that the long-term impacts of missing school is significant on the students' education and learning. Um, even just missing, you know, four days a quarter results in the student missing out in a, over a year of missed learning during their educational experience. Um, and just being a half an hour late, being, in time, being on time and on task is important too. So being just a half an hour late for first period every day, for example, will result in a, almost a year of lost learning. And so what can we do about this? How can we fix this, right? How can we get kids back on board? Um, well, th what those facts I just covered with you is exactly why we built, a, the A2A has built a systems approach. So we use system innovation to bring the problems to you. So you're all familiar with your student information system, and you may even have a system for tracking your IEPs. Um, you may still be use, utilizing learning or LMSs, learning management systems. What we recommend and believe is needed, especially with where we are today, is an attendance management system. And that's where SINA's attention to attendance comes into play. So we believe that the attend attendance management system needs to be an inch wide and a mile deep versus an SIS, which is a mile wide and an inch deep, right? So um, you have to have a process in place, a foundation to support students that's bias free. And so what our system is, is not personnel dependent. Um, it's our, it's a, a process, it's process driven. And to, and the reason that we do this is we want to remove all bias from our communications and our, our uh, interventions with families. And so when we look at, at this from an equity lens, a process-driven foundation, all students are addressed in a timely and consistent manner. So let me give you an example. When we look at something as simple as sending out attendance notifications, we all love to do this, I know, right? What the process is just to get a simple, simple, I'm going to do air quotes, notification out to your families is there's a whole process, right? At the campus level, generally, uh, your attendance staff is running reports to find out who qualifies. They're reviewing it, um, looking for activity in the SIS, 
generating the letters, printing it, all that good stuff, right? So it's a pretty complicated process just to get a letter out. I'm going to show you how we can support our schools or how we support our schools to streamline this process, again, removing the bias and freeing up time for your staff to not have to worry about running these letters. So with that, now I'm going to jump in and start asking you guys some questions. I hope you're ready. All right, so I'm going to start, John, with you. So John, um, why is having a systems approach versus a personnel approach imperative to help in, in solving the challenges your district is facing in regards to attendance and student achievement? That, that, that's huge. Um, first of all, it, it's, it's a, basically it, it takes a village, right, to, to get a child from pre-K to graduation. So it takes all of us in the district. And so you have to, we, we start off with the, our, our needs assessment right, that creates your needs to develop some goals for next year. And then you kind of rally around. Uh, our district goal last year was 93% across the, the district. And so everyone, every department, every campus was working towards that. And it's important to unify that and communicate that continuously, uh, written, posted, communicated, that that's the goal that, that everyone is working towards. Uh, that's, a, that's an important piece. Uh, the data that, you, you, that you're pulling, that you're looking at, uh, for example, we're looking at severe um, chronic and then the number of chronics. We're looking at the, the number of manageable. Once we got a total number the year before, then that you're able to set goals on, we want to decrease those numbers. And at the same time, excellent category, we want to increase that number, right? So, we, But we want to make sure that each campus knows where their numbers are at, where they sit, and the, the students that they're looking at. So it's important to, to create that process that, and you're, you're constantly communicating that process uh, through reports from, um, you know, SNIA and, and also, also our own information system that we use. So, so it's important for them to be versed in that. And you're looking at real data, real time, uh, continuously, you know, you develop habits uh, to look at. And, and we're constantly communicating that at our assistant principal meeting. That's a standing agenda item. It's a, it's a standing agenda item um, at our principal's meeting uh, as well, uh, as, as well as our PTA cadre meeting that, that I oversee the uh, meeting with the, the the presidents of our PTA organizations, um, anything that we lead, basically, we're, we're communicating the attendance rate as to where we're at. Uh, we have an EC community attendance committee as well. And so those are just a lot of different factors that play a role because uh, it's not just, you know, student services. It's it's everyone. It's everyone takes a part in attendance because uh, it, it can be a, it's 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 a it's a challenge in itself, attendance. And, and so it takes all of us to, to get us to where we want to be. And we still got work ahead of us. Uh, and so we'll just kind of put our bootstraps on and then we kind of go to work. But again, we're, we're in this to learn. So I'm, I'm eager to hear what Juan's got to say uh, on his side. But no, but that's it's important to develop the processes. And John, I'm going to come back to that in just a second. So I was I wanted to start with just like fundament the fundamental piece of I'm just going to talk about the let go back to the letters just for a second. Sometimes we hear that schools say, um, or you hear, you know, letters going out, are they really effective? Do you feel like the letter, lettering process and the communication, and Juan, you can jump in here too, um, is helping with your communication and helping drive the processes that you're going to share out with us in a minute? Absolutely. I, I know that we went to our district attorney's office here in Bear County, because again, you know, the goal is not to send kids a truancy, right? And so, but we felt like we had to meet with the district attorney to figure out what 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 does it look like? What does a letter need to look like? So we we had letters that we had previously from A2A, right? But in speaking to her, she said, look, your, your most um, verse letter has to be the first one at three. So when A2A sent that letter at three, it literally has to state who to contact. So that to me is a very powerful letter it comes. And so this is your third unexcused absence. Uh, please contact the campus and here's the name right or you know campus administration and it's got to have a person on there because that was a piece that we we're missing beforehand and so that allows the phone calls to go to the campus to again we want to increase that parent engagement the parent communicated a partner in the process uh because that's that helps the campus already start the communication side um, because again if you had to send someone to, to court file on they're going to refer back to that first letter and when were they notified was there you know was there, you know, is it documented, you know, those things. But yes, very powerful letter. Uh, definitely appreciate that they're coming automatically at three, six, and nine uh, because we, we don't have the manpower in our district to, to fold in, and to send. There, there's no way. Uh, but again, we're very thankful for that partnership, uh, for that to occur. 
I, I know you guys have had phenomenal success, even this year with the state of attendance that we talked about in the beginning, you're seeing almost a 50% reduction in those students who received that first letter versus moving on to the second. Mm -hmm. And so just for those of you that aren't familiar with A2A, um, the process, so A2A um, collects the data from the student information system from the dis district, and then we identify students that need to receive attendance notifications. And then on a weekly basis, uh, the campuses log in for a couple minutes, take a look at who we've qualified, um, and they log out, and then A2A will take care of printing, folding, stuffing, and mailing those letters out on behalf of the schools so they can really focus on the conversations. Juan, did you have anything you want to chime in on the, the letter or communication response from families on the letters? Yeah, sure. No, I'd love to share some of, some of our success stories here with A2A. So what it does for us is able to automatize a very, could be a very complicated process if we were to try to do those letters here in our districts. And when you do that, it takes time away from the adult actions that need to occur at the campus instead of just trying to find out what kids have been absent X amount of days. Let's write a letter. Let's send it out. Let's put us. Uh, uh, let's put a stamp on it and, 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 the, and be able to uh, mail it out. It just takes so much time away. But I kind of want to just take a little step back, if you will, because you know both in East Central ISD and Sheldon ISD. When it comes to the vision and the mission, it's stated in our model, right? It's every student, every day. So what does that mean? So, you know, starting with those conversations where we talk about this idea of every student and East Central goes even farther. They call it every minute, right? But it's every single day. And so we have this understanding that there's only one student that we cannot reach. And that is the student that does not come to school. And so once we understand that priority, Having those uh, processes in which we are able to communicate with our parents is extremely important. And having that communication and building that trust with our parents is very important. Something we were able to do, as a matter of fact, starting out the year is I took all of our administrators, our principals actually, and we went to the local courthouse so that we can get our training from the judge himself. And he said something powerful, and I knew that he was going to do that, but I wanted my administrators to hear from him. And he said this, by the time you bring any student truancy, any student to court, you as a district have already failed because that's not the purpose of us to, you know, the purpose is for the students to go to school and for you to have a very tight system in place that you're able to communicate with your parents in a consistent fashion so that they understand exactly where the students are at as far as you know, attendance goes. And so I think that's why our partnership with A2A was so critical in being able to automize the process. Thank you for that. That was very powerful what the judge shared out with you. That gave me goosebumps. So this it's a great point. Our ultimate goal always is to, to prevent kids from having to go to court, right? That's the last thing the district, the school, or the judge wants to see. So we're going to share out. So John, I know we talked earlier about Kind of just the letter process and, I, and having that fundamental piece in place has enabled your district to really lay out a, a very fine-tuned, sorry, like forward, uh, fine-tuned attendance protocol. And I thought this would be really helpful to share out um, what you, what kind of your take on what you've shared out with your schools across the district, um, in addition to the tier one letters going out from A to A, that happens. But what else, can you share out your process with us too? Yeah, so it, it's... I think the hardest thing is for some to understand is that uh, if it ain't written, it didn't happen, right? Like it has to be a written process and it has to be written and communicated. Um, and so this allowed us to go back and, and you know, because a lot of times when we create protocols, we, we, we have a committee, right? So we assistant principals and in some cases students. And, and so we had to create roles of responsibility. So when a student misses two unexcused absences, like whose role is that? Who's, co who's communicating? Uh, so we have our information systems that, that assist. They created a link that that needs to start with the teacher, right? So if a, if a student misses two consecutive days, there's a link in there. It's a request for parent contact. And then how did you communicate with them, right? Was it class dojo? Was it remind or whatever the case might be? Because all of that documentation is, is being communicated through A2A as well because they have a running, basically, communication log, right? So it, it timestamps everything through A2A, which we, which we really love because it doesn't matter where you're at in the district, wherever you, you sign in or whatnot, you can go to that platform and then you'll see, you know, all the correspondence that's going on with that family, that student. And, and if you have multiple students at different campuses, right? So it keeps it on one log. We added family support specialists that same thing. They're, they're communicating the phone calls at three, right? Uh, in our campus attendance clerk, because 
at times it always falls on, on, on that staff member, right? But here we allowed us to, to gather around and add additional stakeholders basically to assist the attendance clerks because they have a lot on their plate as well. Uh, but it's easy to say, yeah, our attendance clerks are going to call every kid that doesn't come by 10 a.m., right? But man, it, 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 sometimes that number is so large, like you need others to assist, whether it's communities and schools, whether it's a school counselor, you know, it's a printer, whoever, you know, it's kind of like an all hands on deck approach uh, because ultimately it, it's, it's the communication from the top down is attendance is 93% and next year it's going to be 94%. So that's not going away. So we need to do everything in our power to, to create that priority um, and within everyone in our staff. And so A2A sends the letters automatically at three, six, and nine, right? So then you just got to gather who's going to, you know, uh, what role are they playing at five unexcused absences? So, and I felt that we had to create another additional intervention um, at six. So anyone that's got six unexcused absences across the district, we're very grateful to have a partnership with our San Antonio Municipal Court staff. So we have two in our district. And so what they do is, is we, at Student Services, we have a conference room that will invite, you know, 150 families or whatever, they, whatever families get to, or students get to uh, six unexcused absences, they're being invited every Friday elementary, secondary, and then we just want to know what's the barrier, what is it, right? So I'll do the introduction and then they'll sign contracts with the municipal court staff. And if they haven't signed uh, ECISD contract, attendance contracts, then I, I take that lead on as well. But the whole key is listening to, again, you got to listen to understand, right? Before you respond to the situation. And so you, you listen to, well, you know what, we need to get with CIS to help you with resources. Uh, we have, you know, uh, our own, you know, services that we can assist with, but the letters don't stop at 369. And then, so we'll continue on. And again, and then we have our, our third tier, right? In red, which is, that's a stop sign. Like, hey, now the kid's still missing, whatever the case might be. And those are the ones that, you know, the, the law states 10 unexcused or more, right? So, but again, that's not our goal. Our goal is to prevent that. And so if there is a, a student, what this does is that if, if there's a family, we invite them to mediation court, actually at 10, all right? But next year, we're going to move that to eight. But whenever they get to, to the mediation, all they're doing is talking to a judge and then they're listening to the story too. They're not being filed on, but we allowed them another contract to be in place. So it's a lot of interventions, uh, but I do know some administrators are like, man, that there's no teeth, you know, like, what are y'all doing? Or But the key is, what, what are you doing as well? Because we have to document, because again, if it's not written, it didn't happen, right? You're saying you're calling this family, but where are you? You didn't document an A2A, you didn't, because that's what we're using. And so it was important to create a protocol across the district. That way they can all see. Um, our, our school resource officers also look at this protocol because they assist with home visits as necessary. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's critical to communicate that district wide, get everybody on the same page. And this is where we're at. But I think whenever we went to color code, you know, like kind of like a, 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 when you're driving, right? So yellow, it's kind of, we're, we're good. But then, you know, orange is like, hey, you know, it's, it's kind of like a monitor even higher, but then red is like, whoa, we got to put a stop sign to this. But, you know, definitely, and, and this is, we review this quarterly, right? So if there's any tweaks that we got to make, we're going to we're gonna adjust in real time. And so we're reviewing this right now for next year. So just know that it's not a finished product. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I know that's going to be very helpful to others as well. And I thought we'd share here just kind of some results of, from that process, what you saw year over year. Earlier, we were talking about growing our excellent and satisfactory student populations and reducing the others. I know this was one that you piece of data that you wanted to share out. Did you want to talk about kind of how you use this and what you were seeing as well? Yeah. So uh, as we create, again, in Heritage Central, we create our needs assessment at the end of the year uh, for next year, right? So but I felt that it was important to start dissecting uh, the numbers on, you know, each category and let's figure out where they're at. And then so, in doing so, when you pay intentional attention to how do we decrease the numbers at secondary schools or third grade at a specific elementary school, they have a list of those students that fall in those categories. So then you're able to put contracts in place before school starts or whatever the case might be is assisting those families, but then you see the numbers drop and that's the keys that you want to see the impact, right? So what was the impact of when we had those conversations, because the key is that we want the kid in school. That's the bottom line, right? And then so, uh, you know, multiple home visits. But again, the, the more you can add more to your toolbox on staff members that can go out and do the home visits, create that platform. Hey, you got one hour, do as many as you can. 
uh, and then get back and let's let's kind of figure that out. And and they protect their calendars. So there's, you know, I work with all campuses on, on attendance strategies or whatever the case might be, but that was vital is to be looking at that number. Uh, and there's some other data points that we'll share later, but it's, it's important to kind of look at a dashboard to keep you on that goal, right? So are, are you are you hitting the mark? If you're not, then where do we pivot? Uh, because it's not one of those where you set the goal at 93% and you kind of forget about, because again, these kids that fall in these categories are connected to the 93%. That the bottom line is, you know, how do we basically get them to come to school on a daily basis? And if it's, well, oh, I don't I don't like first period or whatever, no, no, no. We, that's that's connected to ADA. Like we need you here. That's our money period, right? Like we need you here. And it's it's sometimes it's a parent teacher conference, you know. So, but that's it's important to look at the right data. That's a great segue, John. Thanks. So speaking of da of data, um, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna jump into thank you for sharing the previous slide, but we're gonna jump into some more additional data. But before we do so, really remembering that data should tell a story. Now we always have those numbers like the 93 or the 94 or the 10 percent, right? But really the data should be inspiring in action. Um, and sometimes just relying on the SIS can be hard, right? Sometimes it's not easy to get the data. It's not hard to um, desegregate that data. We know that attendance taking practices kind of were a little bit wonky in March of 2020. Um, and, and really now looking, going back and looking at the processes around attendance taking is critical. Something as, as simple as attendance taking is going to be really important because that tells the story in the data. Um, and then knowing, using your data to see, are your schools doing the same thing? <clears throat> Excuse me. Are there checks and balances? Um, how often we're looking at data? We're going to share that right now with you guys as well. Um, and are you the first or last to know if there's problems with the data and the practices? So we really take the data piece, and this is why I have John and Juan here with me. We're all very um, data folks um, because it tells the story. Um, and so I'm going to start with Juan on this one. So Juan, I know that we love to look at data, um, but what role does data analysis have on informing your, your actions and interventions with families and uh, your schools across the district? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, it needs not to be said that data should drive everything we do, but uh, I'd like to take a, a step back again. Uh, we started the year with, you know, the story that I shared with you, took him to the courthouse. But the next thing that we asked our administrators was this, what do you want, what do we at the district level want to be able to identify that will be our goal? What would be the ADA that we want to, uh, you know, shoot for and let that be our goal? And so we decided looking at numbers, looking at where we were last year and our historical data, and we, had, we identified 95 to be our goal. And so that's perfect because now we have a very specific goal and we want it to be at 95% our ADA. And so the next thing that we did is we came up with what we call our magic number. So just simply put, we wanted every single principal to know how many students they can actually have absent any single day and still be able to make that mark. So for example, let's make it easy. Let's say that you have 100 students and your ADA, you know, your goal is 95%. That means that any given day, you cannot have more than five students absent. And so we call that your magic number. Find out what is your magic number so that every day that we take attendance, we know whether you're going to be on the mark, above the mark, or below the mark. So that every day you can monitor that and you can maybe make adjustments the following day. And that's what we call our magic number. And so that became posted in every single campus, shared with every single uh, classroom teacher, but also shared with every parent. And sharing the idea of why it is important for students to be in school and educating the parents in that idea and sharing the goal. Why not? That our average, uh, that our goal for our ADA is 95%. So we started the year with that and understand that there's no negotiables around that because we thought that if every day counts, right, that is, that is found in our motto. That is our vision and our mission every single day. So that means that we need to take, I and mean, it takes a village, just like John stated. And so we wanted every campus to have a system in place. We could not start the year. Principals had to report this back to me. What is your system that you will check attendance before 10 o'clock so that you can identify whether you made your mark or not? But most importantly, we want to make those phone calls before we take attendance. 
So what we found out right away is that a lot of the times, you know, you have students that are absent because maybe they have a dentist appointment or, or some type of an issue, but maybe that's not going to happen until like maybe one or two o'clock, but the parents keep the kid because it's just easier. So it's that educating the parent that every single day counts. So if the dentist appointment will be at one o'clock, that means you can still bring your child in and, you know, maybe an hour, an hour and a half before the appointment, you can come and pick him up and that would be perfectly fine. Our parents didn't understand that. Something as simple as that can really change your numbers. And so the idea is to get everybody on deck or hands on deck and start making phone calls. Because let's say that your magic number, you know, in this uh, fictitious school where you have 100 students is five. Let's say that any given day you have maybe seven or eight students that are absent. Well, the idea is to get it down to that number. And you know, as a, uh, as the district, um, as a campus leader, that if you're able to bring that number down to your magic number, eventually your ADA is going to work out. And so, so those are the things that we implemented that were extremely important in being proactive so that we have a system in place. At the end of the day is the adult actions that will make a difference. We can have all the data and most of us do. And sometimes we get paralysis of analysis, all these data <laughs> points of how many students are here, they're not. We want to simplify the process, understand what is that magic number. And as a principal, you know that you cannot go over that number. And if you do, well, tomorrow you can make it up, right? Because that's the way that averages work. You can make it up, but you can't let it drop so much that you will not be able to make it up. And so right on cue here. So this is a dashboard that we use in our district. And so we created this dashboard because we share this with our principals every single day, right? Goes back to that vision, every child, every day. And so we'll report to you, campus principal, exactly what many students you had absent every single day. And remember, we, we set up our mark at 95%. So any day that is below 95%, uh, this spreadsheet would automatically be highlighted in light red. Anything that is lower 90% would be a little darker and anything lower than 87% would be bright red. And so the systems in place are this. If you have anything less than a 95, you will have Mr. Duenas come over at the end of the week and you're going to have to tell me about the systems that you have in place, how are they working or not working because we don't want a whole week to go by where you're hitting lower than a 95%, right? And so those are the systems that are in place. It, it gives you that awareness. It gives you that goal setting, but most importantly, that accountability. And it's not a gotcha environment. It's what can I do to support your process? Because those phone calls that I were making in the morning in conjunction with the A to A letters, maybe they're not working to the level we wanted to work. So what can we change? And so what that did is it created some competition, which is wonderful. Since we send this dashboard out to all of our principals, you know, it begins to create a, a competition among the principals because they don't want to be the lower performing one. And so it creates this friendly competition where we learn from each other. But what it does too, as a principal, you bring it down to each grade level. Now, every grade level understands what is their magic number. And so there begins to be competition between grade levels and even down to the classroom teacher. So that healthy competition of transparency and just brutal honesty, this is our goal, this is where we're at, and you're not there, but you know what? At the end of the day, we are a district. We're one team with one goal. So we're all going to rally together and work with each other. Yes, we are going to compete, but we're going to compete together. So some of the things that we've been able to do. Love it. Thank you for sharing that. And I thought we would just take a really quick look too at, I know we were um, talking about the total absence calendar, and this is where we can look on a daily basis by district or by campus. Here we have a district sn snippet of what your attendance year looked like this the school year that just ended um and so the on average your district has about 679 students out per day on a, a better attendance day less than 575 high absence day over 783 is there, is there anything specifically that that you utilize this app, this total absence calendar for that you want to share out yeah sure so we we use this uh, another data point right so that we can kind of begin to see it by month where we're at and where you know where we are missing the mark and begin to have those conversations with the parents. And one of the things that came out of this data point is the importance for every campus to be able to have that parent education. You know, we have a lot of Hispanic uh, in, in our campus and a lot of the times they don't understand the importance of their students coming 
to uh, coming to school every day. You know, maybe it's hot or maybe it's too cold or maybe it's too rainy. And, you know, mijo, you, you know, you can stay home <laughs> and, and not go to school. But they don't understand how important that is and what that means. And so we understand that, you know, uh, February, December, you know, there's very some months that you begin to see the patterns where you already know in advance that let's start having those phone calls and let's do these webinars that we provided for our parents. And we were very strategic when we um, scheduled those webinars for our parents. And another thing that we realized that those webinars, they are much better communicated if they're done through the campus. So the parents trust the school Sometimes they don't trust the district as much. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You're in central office. It's kind of scary, but I understand. I've met with the principal. I trust my principal. And so we challenge our principals to be able to start uh, providing parent uh, training to understand the importance of attendance. Fantastic. And John, I know you were going to share out a little bit. This is how you are tracking attendance as well. Can you share a little bit about how you use this ADA dashboard? Yes, um, I, I want to comment though on the uh, monthly calendar, the, how, how we use it. We, we were able to dissect and look at the, um, the Monday after Super Bowl, right, was a, a poor attendance. So now that's a staff development day, right? The other one is the day after Easter. That's also now a staff development. So we were able to make uh, changes to our academic calendar. Uh, and then so we'll continue to look at that and to see if there's any additional days that we have to make those staff development days for our staff. Uh, but so just that's something that we can, you know, you can use as well. This here, uh, every Monday, our information system sends us out and it's from the, the week before. And so they did a great job of, of basically creating a signal system. Uh, our district goal across the district last year was 93%. This year it'll be 94. So anything that is uh, 94% or higher, it's in green. That tells you hey, we're good to go, right? But anything from 90 to 93, it's in yellow. Right, so if you're below 90%, then you're specifically in red because you know your eyes take you to the red. Uh, so you're able to dissect it from my office. I'm able to work with campuses on, hey, you know, second grade was at 88. Tell me what's going on, kind of like what Juan does. And because again, you want to not so much I got you, but how can I support you, and in, in, as to what it might be, right? So do we need to to the CIS need to get involved? We have a CIS person at every campus uh, here in our district. Uh, we have I, we have two municipal court staff members from the city of San Antonio that can assist with home visits, so we can you know assist in those capacities. But we're able to dissect it by semester, by month, whatever the case might be. But now we're able to run it side by side, right? So that's the one thing that so moving forward this year we'll be doing the same thing. So last year in October our attendance rate was here. What is it now? Because you want to see if there's any pitfalls, you know, projecting coming forward. Uh, but again, you're able to put supports in place beforehand. But that's how we kind of generate that. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, this this is a standing agenda item that's on every AP meeting, on every principal meeting. So that that doesn't go away. Uh, we we do you know weekly we have that we look at that ADA report. We reach out to principals and we wanted to celebrate any wins, right? So not just your perfect attendance kit, you know, but any growth. Uh, in red, you might have a specific secondary uh, elementary campus that's in red for three weeks out of that month, but for whatever reason, the last, they were now in yellow, right? So then you wanna celebrate that. So what, what did those second grade teachers do at that time? You know, and it might have been a remind session that they sent to us, keep doing that because that was the behavior that, that caused the, those things. And, and, and so um, our, our principals send out weekly newsletters for families, they communicate the attendance, you know, on the marquees, uh, our Marcom, our, our marketing communications, they send that out, you know, September is, uh, you know, Attendance Awareness Month. That's something that we want to align to the themes uh, across the district. Uh, and then quarterly, you know, we created an EC Community Attendance Committee that has faith-based, that has a lot of different uh, nonprofit organizations across San Antonio. But we have a, a assistant principals, principals from across the district that, so we meet once every nine weeks and we just talk about this is good, better, and different. This is our attendance rate right now. This is where, what our goal is. And then everybody just gives different ideas. And, and so the key is to, to welcome that feedback. And, you know, feedback is a gift, you know, even though it's not where it needs to be, but we want to get, you know, improve. We also found our PTA cadre, our president, PTA, they're, they're in the campuses already. So, yes. Uh, we're, we're inviting them, but when you talk to the PTA president, they're like, you really don't want us on your campus, right? I'm talking to all these parents and you really don't want us. And so that was a good 
conversations that we've had at our PTA cadre meetings because then I'm able to go back to principals and campus and say, hey, listen, I know you're doing family engagement, but families, for whatever reason, feel that they're not wanted, whether it's eating with their child or whatever. So you've got to work on that trust, kind of what Juan's saying, because it, it's it's never ending. You don't want to burn that trust with that family because they're going to trust you before district staff, right? So I don't want to be the hero. It's got to be a partnership there at that level, at the ground level. Uh, so when you do that, then you're able to like, hey, and it's okay to put your attendance rate when they're signing their kid out, right? So if you have a, a, a parent sign their kid out at 930 and the ADA period's at 10 to go to the dentist, it's okay to put the attendance rate right there. And then because they could be contributing to, you know, not hitting the mark, right? And that way, oh, I didn't know I, I could just wait 15 more minutes and or 20 more minutes. And, you know, yes, absolutely. So it's informing the parent. We want to engage them as much as possible. Uh, because that's what I do also at the student services contract meetings at six because they're unaware of, okay, because a lot of them don't turn in parent notes for whatever reason. It's like, no, it's like a no call, no show at work. You've got to communicate with the school, you know, tell us as to what's going on. Um, and then we partner, you know, we handle with care. It's, a, it's with our local San Antonio Police Department. So if there's an issue going on outside of school uh, that something occurs, we get that notification from the SAPD overnight but it, it's, it gets sent to like four or five us in, the, in, in our district staff. And then so we're able to communicate with the principal, the counselor, that something might happen. So in the event the kid doesn't come to school, so we'll know, granted it's confidential, but at the same time, if the kid doesn't come for two consecutive days, it allows us to go to the home and make a random stop without saying, hey, we were informed by SAPD, but more of, hey, I miss little Johnny at school. Is there anything that we can help you? And it with, with the trust being built, the family will tell you a lot of what, what occurred. And that way we can put the, pro the proper supports in place. Because, yeah, unfortunately, you didn't come two days in a row. But we want to prevent this from occurring in, in the future. You know, the, the, and if, if you have to put some traumatic uh, adverse situations to help with the, with the counseling or outside counseling, you're able to do that proactively. And I think the biggest piece is that we found a, an, an increase of our grandparents raising grandchildren across the district. So with that, we were able to partner with those with our agency and then so they're able to equip it and kind of have uh, the platform to meet with all our grandparents at each campus uh, just on, on, on key topics on attendance on social media on those because they don't know right they only know what they know and so it was important for them to know uh, attendance you, your mijo's got to be here by by 9 30 right and then, and then so like well I don't have a, a ride well transportation they can pick them up this is a bus number, you know, all those things. So, but that's, we're very thankful to have those partnerships in place because it allows us to, we know things occur outside of school that affect, you know, coming to school, but we want to be pro, how can we help with that, right? We want to be that bridge. Step and John, how often do those, the grandparent meetings happen? About? We do it I know monthly. It's not monthly, we do right. monthly, right. And, and so it, it's, we had them in two campuses, but this year we're going to do it across the district at the same time. Uh, at every every at every campus, so CIS will be connected with that along with their school counselor. Um, so that'll be we're looking forward to that piece because again, our grandparents raising grandchildren, uh, Miss Bristol does a great job because it's it was grandparents raising grandchildren, but now it turned into Texas grandparents raising grandchildren. So now she goes to the White House and goes to speak and and those things because she's trying to get more support for grandparents, but. Now we're able to tell her like, hey, you pick a campus where you want to go to. Like they're 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 going to be going on at the same time across the district because it was too hard for some of our families on the northern end to go to the southern end, vice versa. So now everyone's got it. Uh, but that was that was important for us. Well, that's that. a great segue into my next question. Actually, kind of pre-answered some of my question that's coming up. Um, so I was going to ask you both kind of how your approach to addressing attendance has changed, uh, although they officially declared the pandemic is over back in May. Um, has has the way that you looked at attendance data or your approach has changed? Now, I know you were just talking about kind of really ramping up the grandparents' um, uh, partnerships with, with your campuses. That expanded. But I have a data slide here, but feel free to speak to – Juan, do you want to go first? I can go out of order a little bit. Yeah, um so this is just a snippet of your year over year attendance practices, but I know the primary question was what kind of what's changed or how are you approaching attendance differently now coming out of the pandemic? So I think it has drastically changed and we begin to really understand that it takes a whole village that you have to be very proactive and very intentional. And so in the past, yes, we have taken attendance. Yes, we've looked at data. Yes, we've had communication. And yes, we've even had A2A work with us. I think we've uh, worked with A2A for the last uh, two, uh, maybe three years, maybe more. But it just, you know, being very intentional about it. If we want to move the needle, 
we're going to have to do something different. So that was the first aha. We cannot continue doing the same things and expect different results. And so once we identified that, then we had, to, we, we, we had to gather around the table and think about outside of the box ideas of what it takes. And this is what we realized. Number one, yes, we need to continue being reactive, right? Sending those letters when the kids are absent and having those communications. But this idea of being proactive, that was the big aha. Can we be proactive and create systems in place that are monitored in a very consistent manner so that we can all kind of keep track of each other and keep each other accountable so that we can meet our goal? So that was a big, big change. And then the third leg of the stool is, yes, we can do that as a campus, but when we say a village, we mean a village. We need the parents and the parents need to be educated. It's not that they're mean or that they're, you know, that they don't understand, is that they don't fully understand how important it is that every day counts. And I think that slide that you had at the beginning where you actually break it up by numbers, if a student is even tardy for one hour, what does that mean? The amount of instructional loss is incredible and in how that affects the kids. And so the only student that we cannot really affect and be able to touch is the student doesn't come to school. So when parents begin to understand that, teachers begin to understand that, principals know how to keep teachers accountable. Now we're all working as in one unison system. It's not a gotcha system. It's just a very simple streamlined way of monitoring this every single day because we said every day counts. And so we kept a very simple system. We stick to that one dashboard. We want to keep it simple. We have one dashboard that keeps track of, of attendance at every campus every day. And you know whether you made that magic number or not, whether you're meeting the, uh, the target or not. And if you're not, how many days are you going to be okay allowing that to happen at your campus? Well, now that everybody's looking at my dashboard, yeah, I'm not okay with that happening too many days. <laughs> and so that kind of incentivates those adult actions behind what needs to be done. Awesome. And we can see here it's working. What you're doing is working. I'm going to flip back just a second, John, for East Central's data. But we saw that your excellent student um, enroll or population has increased year over year. 9% of your students missed less than 1%, so less than two days of school, which is awesome. Um, and your chronic on the opposite side there has gone down over four percentage points. I'm going to go flip back up to East Central real quick because I know I skipped over it because I want to, then I'm going to go forward to talk about the positive things you guys are doing, because I know that was one of the questions from our um, guests. So for um, East Central, you were able to increase your excellent student population from five to eight percent, again, missing less than one percent of, of the school year, and drastically reduced your chronic rate from 40 down to 24. So you're making some serious progress. And one of the things we were talking about is taking a positive, proactive, recognizing the the wins. So I know, John, you shared out, and um, Juan, you were talking about some of the celebrating attendance um, activities that go on. You have to read through it, but do you want to share some things out of them that have been really promoting excitement around showing up and, and what your schools are doing with that? Yeah, no, absolutely. The uh, As far as the celebrations, you know, we, we focused in on the manageable list, right? That's kind of where we focused on because those are the ones that can go either way, right? So we wanted to educate those students, those families, uh, but at the same time, you know, if you take care of those students and then they're able to get to the satisfactory category and the cat, those students can move on over to the excellent category, but it's recognizing specific grade levels, right? Because we already have a tiered behavior system across the district. And so we were able to align it just to that. So the way you're celebrating rewards for behavior, right? The behaviors you want to see, well, let's do the same thing for attendance. So if you had a kid that was severe chronic the first month, and all of a sudden, now they're satisfactory the second month. Celebrate that kid. That is huge because he's made, you know, may not be a big deal to mom, right? Mom's a young mom and, and, and you know, grandma and grandpa in the picture. But the key is educate that third grader. Like, mijo, it matters. If you're not here, it matters. Like, you are important. You are going to, you know, make a difference. You got to come every day. So now you have elementary kids having the same language on, hey, mijo, mom, I can't miss. Um, you know, and, and I know that there's middle school, they got their own, again, what, what, uh, what the culture on the campus as to what, you know, to some, they want to have a, you know, a music dance off for 30 seconds, you know, uh, in elementary and, and, and that's okay with them, whatever the case might be, but they, every, every principal knows that you have autonomy to do whatever you feel is, is necessary on your campus to promote the attendance to, you know, because I do know that, uh, one, one middle school, they give away swag, right? So every Friday, 
they'll just call certain names kids out because my son was one of those went up there i don't even know why i got called and what shirt blown up it's a it's a maroon it's a school shirt i said hey you were in the in this, you know, the excellent category. That's where they want kids to be. So you want the kids to ask, hey, why did you get a shirt, right? And then so technically you wanna move that, but at the same time, they're given other awards for kids that fall in the other categories as well. And so it's not just, again, it's not your perfect attendance getting the bike, right? You wanna celebrate often and throughout, because again, uh, you know, attendance is hard. You know, we just gotta figure out other ways to motivate, inspire, you know, the kid to keep coming. And it might be just a wristband, you know, who's to say, you know, and so those are the things that we're looking at and we're constantly going to be looking for other attendance celebrations, banners at school, communicating with our Marcom, like how can we push out, you know, the elementary campus that had the highest growth, right? Not just the, you know, the highest rate, but the highest growth from the year, the month before to now, you know, so we want to celebrate those things. So, you know, it's, it's you know, we work together on those things, but, uh, you know, breakfast, lunch with the principal, I think those are critical you know, because some are afraid of the principal at times. They're like, hey, I just see them walking fast. And, you know, but whenever they're able to sit down and, and get their feedback, but then you're also getting the feedback on the culture of the campus, right? Like, hey, how can we improve our practices here? And so, but no, it's, it's a really good uh, slide that you have there. And, you know, yeah, and this was just a little snippet. So yes. I'm sure John would be able to, would be willing to share out. Juan, did you have anything you wanted to add in? I know you guys do some great yeah, things. So I, I just want to add this idea, you know, when, whenever we, we, we put this uh, non-negotiable that as, as a school, you're going to come up with a system to call every single day the students that are not there. And so, you know, those conversations actually were very powerful because parents were, you know, the conversation was very positive. You know, hey, we're missing Javier. He's not here today. We just want to make sure he's fine. Parents were like, wow, you guys really do care about my kid. Not only do you care, you notice when he's not there. So it created an incredible positive uh, communication with, with the parents. And the second point that I wanted to touch that John talked about is this, this idea of giving principals autonomy. So once you come up with the goal and you come up with the system, the principals, they come up with their own incredible uh, reward systems. Uh, on, on how they can move the needle and they become very creative. And then they have the open uh, autonomy and space to be able to create, you know, very rewarding uh, ideas and parties and what have you to try to incentivate the students to come. So yeah, it, it, it becomes very, uh, it's, it's a high leverage activity to be able to do that. Hmm. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that out. That's great. So I was going to just quickly, we're going to talk about, I know we're about 10 minutes to go um, and we'll, we'll be wrapping it up. But I wanted to share out a little bit more, John, we were talking about um, the letters earlier. I just thought we would show out kind of what the volume of the letters that have been sent out on behalf of your schools. And if you had any feedback and Juan, your numbers were very similar as well. Um, not only do we send out that first truancy letter, but we put that process in place, right? So it's got that checks and balances. If a student receives a letter, they continue to miss more than the second letter goes out. Uh, I believe for both of you, you conference out that second letter, and mm -hmm. we see a significant drop in the kids who get a letter three. Uh, about half of the students who received a first letter um, did not move on to the to the um, to the to the second letter. And then also with the um, we supposed to send unexcused absence letters and excused absence letters. Um, is there anything you guys want to share? So I know many districts do truancy letters or warning letters, right? Mm -hmm. So. In it now, as a partner of A two A, you have also opted into, or we were also addressing excessive excused absences. Have, mm -hmm. Has that made an impact on your 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 bottom line that we were talking about earlier in your chronic absenteeism? So what kind of it they made a tremendous difference before A two A. You know, we had our campuses uh, send out those letters, but it was very hit and miss. It wasn't standardized. Some schools were doing a really good job and some were not doing a very good job. So it didn't send a consistent message to our parents. And so that, that in itself is worth so much, you know, just that consistency. And then the second point that I like to make is that it helped our administrator staff at each campus not to have to worry so much about collecting, you know, the names of the students, how many days were they absent and not getting that right and just not being on top of it. And just one more thing in their plate was too much. I rather than worry about being proactive instead of reactive with the letters and let A to A take over that process for us and just streamline that process. So that has been so effective and given us the gift of time. That's what I, you know, that's what I share with my staff. It gives us the gift of time. So now we can be proactive and try to make those phone calls every day and monitor every single day where attendance is at and coming up with these out of the box reward ideas to keep the kids motivated and incentivated to be able to come to, to, to school. 
fantastic. And I see I have an error on the slide, you guys. I apologize. I'll update that before we send out the PowerPoint um, to our guests. All right, so we talk about communicating differently. I know probably many of you, when I said we're addressing excessive excuse, we're like, oh my gosh, no. Uh, but we, what we do need to communicate differently than we have in the past. So some things I would recommend on those attendance notifications, letters, communications that are, you're sending out um, on behalf of the district or your campus is really promoting the programs and schools um, to the community, the neighborhood. Um, keeping your communication simple, right? It's easy to understand um, and in the home language. We know that there is some legalese that has to be on the letters, some of our truancy letters, but really I know even for our district partners, we've kind of sought, we have the legalese there that's required, but the bulk of the letter is, hey, we noticed you're missing, we care, and we want you here at school. And so looking at how you can do that to create that conversation. So when that letter goes out, that letter's not gonna fix it, right? It's gonna be a conversation they're gonna have with you. And so we want the communication to drive the conversation and the connection back to the school. Um, so something that we do is we work with our district partners and we offer tier two and tier three communications, which are positive, proactive um, touch points that go out to the families. I'm going to share an example of Sheldon's in just a second. Um, but you also, you also want to utilize your data to make sure your, your um, communications are targeted, they're relevant, um, and they're making a difference, right? So we're going to talk about that. And really, in all of your communications, via letter, um, electronic communications, all of that, really needs to send a message to our families that we care, we want you there, we miss you when you're gone, and we have these great programs. So I know all, most of all of our districts have great uh, programs in place and resources available. But again, I think Juan, when you started off, you were saying if they're not there, then we can't offer that to them. We need to we need to be able to communicate so we can help fix that problem. Um, I know that. Um, let me see. I'm going to jump into the question, Juan. I know that we we've kind of looked at the way we're communicating with our families, and um, one of the things I, I wanted to share out is how you guys start off the 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 new school year every year, um, we send a letter out on behalf of your superintendent um, to the families to welcome everybody back. But I want to see if you just had any feedback on um, the positive, proactive welcome back letter from the superintendent, or if you received any feedback on that. Yes, we did. Uh, you know, once again, starting off the year with that consistency uh, of communication and that coming out as a letter from our superintendent to the parents, it actually kickstarted that educational component that I share with you with our parents so that they begin to understand, A, we're going to monitor this, uh, B, we're here to support you, and C, we need your help. We need your help to be part of the equation so that at the end of the day, we can do what we all want to do, which is be able to advance the student outcomes, right? Your child is very important to us but I need your support at home. So getting an official letter from a superintendent starting that the year that way was extremely important. And it just aligned the entire focus that we uh, had this year on, on attendance and being able to move the needle in, in, uh, in that area. Absolutely. I think using terms like here together, we will succeed. You know, um, attending every day possible, um, help students stay on track is, is really critical. I, I think sometimes it's, it's kind of undervalued or misunderstood that we assume our parents know this, right? But sharing that out, I think is so critically important. I just want to pause for a second. I think we are going to go over a couple minutes extra just for our, for our guests that are attending. If you need to drop off, I totally understand. We want to talk, one of our uh, primary questions we received from um, the registration was on types of uh, materials that you would recommend to promote positive attendance. So I'm going to go into that, maybe go over about five to ten, seven minutes over. So you're welcome to stay on with us. We want to share out some information, um, but I apologize for going over. There's just so much great information from Juan and John. I just want to keep listening myself. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to continue on, but we will provide a recording of the, um, of the full webinar as well. Um, all right. So so we're, look, we're talking about communicating differently. We know things have changed over the past several years. When we get asked by districts, you know, what should we do? What can we do? How often should we do it? Um, we know that when families feel informed and they're involved, they're more actively um, able to support their child's learning and academic success, right? A key critical piece of the of the the communications when you're doing the positive is it's kind of it's marketing for your district right and, and for the importance of showing up so regular communication that's consistent it's timely it's relevant is going to be where you're going to kind of get the most bang for your buck so what we do for many of our district partners is we provide a tier two and tier three um, positive proactive um, communication pieces and here's just a snippet an example of what some of our district partners do so we're communicating on a monthly basis and we're making it relevant to what's going on so we know in september we have it's like Christmas for me, Attendance Awareness Month in September. 
Uh, we also provide um, some uh, messaging and some tools for our district partners that they can use throughout the month. Um, and then we, we know the absences start to kind of creep up in October. So we send out postcards to the students and they absolutely love these postcards. Those kids are bringing those postcards back to school for rewards and recognition. Um, and other kids are asking, hey, how did you get that postcard? And most of the time the kids are saying, I just show up to school, right? And so we send out information prior to the holiday breaks, reminding the parents, um, how, although tempting, don't expend, extend your holidays because this has a direct impact on your students' learning. Uh, we send out reminders during winter break. We talk, talk about habits and good habits. So we have pieces that are going out directly to the students, and we have pieces that go out directly to the parents. And when we send those pieces out to the parent, it goes out in home language as well. And, and we try to keep it bright, easy to read. You don't have to be, you know, a PhD to understand it, but really relevant for those. So um, this is what I would recommend. We can help support you with this, but we, it's consistent, timely um, communications going out. That's different. So as you can see, if this was in your mailbox, you're going to grab that out, right? Um, and so that's where we get a lot of great results. And what types of results are we seeing? I just have a, a little snippet of some districts. I know earlier I was talking about we work with urban and suburban and rural districts um, throughout the United States. And these are just some of the results we saw um, from the 2020. 122 to the 22, 23, it's a mouthful, um, and results. For example, we had a, have a district of 21,000 students. They were able to regain over 1.349 or 1,349,000,000 hours of learning last year, which equated to 6.35% um, in ADA. Um, going to our smaller districts down on the bottom, uh, district of 2,000 gained over 91,000 hours, um, resulting in a 4% um, increase in ADA. So would this work for you? Yes, th this will work for everybody. And it really comes back to that fundamental thing that we first started with is having a, a system approach to this that enables you then to really let your staff engage, right, and put processes in place that are consistent across the district and removing the bias, making sure that nobody slips through the cracks. Now, I have some recommendations, um, John and Juan, for what our districts need to do. And it seems like there's not a lot of breather between one school year and another, right? But as we start talking about coming back in the fall, um, I have some ideas here that I'll just leave up. But Juan and John, thank you so much for, for chatting with us today. I did want to touch base with each of you before we go on any last thoughts, recommendation, recommendations, tips that you want to share out before we go. Um, and if there's anything on here that stands out to you that feel free to chime in. I'll start with you, Juan, because you look like you're ready to share out. Yeah, no, I think it's extremely important to understand the why behind all of this. And once you understand the why and be able to wrap around your ideas and your systems, I think it makes it very streamlined. But the secret is you have to bring, you have to work in collaboration with your school leaders. They have to understand the importance and they have to be on your same side so that they understand how important this is and why we are implementing this system. Because, you know, at the very beginning, this idea that Mr. Duenas had of making those phone calls every single day seemed impossible to be, to be completed. But, you know, when we started and, and we have everybody involved, they quickly realized, yes, this can be done, number one. Number two, it makes a big difference. But they have to know the why behind it. Right. And I can imagine they feel that your staff feels the impact immediately as they're making those calls. They're seeing this is working. Oh, my goodness, this is working. And I'm hoping I'm. I'm hoping and assuming that each that list is, has gotten shorter over time. So initially it was a huge list. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. And as we move forward, the list has gotten smaller, smaller, and smaller because cool. their staff has had the opportunity to connect and educate along the way. So I absolutely love that idea. Um, John, any thoughts from you before we go? Definitely making sure that uh, everyone on, on district level understands the goal, right? That we're all rowing the same direction, right? Like row the boat, right? We're all going the same direction. But then taking that, each campus knows, each has to communicate with their community, with their families, right? The families have to know what the goal is. And then, you know, we're in this together because, you know, we, we don't, we're not here to get you, but we want to know if there's a situation going on that's preventing the, the, the child from coming to school, let us know. We can put supports in place right away uh, not, not be reactive. Um, and, uh, and, you know, anytime when you can dissect data, from like right now for next year, for example, you're able to target those families when they're coming in at registration. You're able to meet with them at that time. Hey, listen, last year you missed this many days. Is there anything that we could do to prevent that? Because we, you know, we want you to be successful um, because it might be at third grade or reading levels, right? Or, or at first grade reading levels. So that's a, a an intentional conversation in regards to, you know, 
every other Friday you're taking off. And, and so that's, those are specific. And, 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 you know, through that family, but the bottom line is, can you come on a daily basis? Cause we want to get you here. Cause it impacts learning. It impacts the graduation rate, you know, drop our, all of it's connected, but it does take a village to get everyone from pre-K to graduation. It takes all of us. Fantastic. Those are great final thoughts, you guys. Thanks. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody who's attending today. Um, John, Juan, thank you for sharing the knowledge. You may be getting some emails from some of our guests asking for additional information. I've seen some in the chat today. Um, feel free to reach out to me as well. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, and we look forward to a really strong school year starting next year. If you guys want more information on A2A, please give us a call. Um, John and Juan are happy to share their experience as well with you guys. Um, anyway, with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Everybody have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you for joining today, and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Have a great day.